but I am uh, on top of the dryer here. We have the downspout plugged. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartton Family Farms. And today, it's Sunday the 26th, I believe. Ooh, there's a nice 8250. Dang. Yeah, it is Sunday the 25th, and I make a parts run this morning. But we are, uh, oh, it's nine o'clock right now. We go, to, my wife and I, go, we'll go to church at 10.30. But I wanted to make a parts run south of the Quad Cities. I live in the Quad Cities. I don't live up at the farm. Um, and we're actually buying some parts to repair our corn head. I guess not really repair, but to help help fix our cornhead. I'll explain a little bit more. I'm assuming some of you guys out there will know the name where I'm going to. I've never stopped at this factory machine shop, whatever you want to call it, but I didn't realize it was this close. So you guys will see when we get there. So here it is, Calmer Cornheads is where I'm actually stopping at. I didn't realize it was like this close to me, but like I said, it was only about a half hour from my house. So we're picking up some parts for our Gearinghoff cornhead. I'll go into that a little bit later because I'm heading out to the farm later today, but I need to find these parts first. Then I'll kind of talk a little bit more about, you know, what we're doing here. So here you are, like I said, we are just south of the Quad Cities at Calmer Cornheads. We're picking up some uh, attachment kits. We're picking up basically a slowdown kit for our gearing off cornhead. I'll explain why we're doing that a little bit later, but one thing I really want to give props to Calmer Cornheads and Marion Calmer specifically, we have been, we found an issue on our cornhead on Friday. We talked about what we wanted to do on Saturday and Saturday morning at like eight o'clock, Pat called Marion himself, the owner of the company, and basically was like, hey, we need this for our cornhead. What do you guys think? And he was like, yes, we have it. You can come down and pick it up in an hour. I'm like, what? He's like, well, we can't make it down today. What about tomorrow? The owner of the company gave us his personal cell phone number and he answers it any time of the day. That right there is a sign of a dedicated owner who really wants to do the best for his customers. So Marion Calmer and the entire Calmer family, thank you guys very much. We'll let you guys know what we're doing here once I get back to the farm. It's kind of cool. From what I know, they do basically attachments and upgrades to uh, corn heads. And they even make their own corn heads. Yeah, there's a Calmer 1615. Because I know actually a couple farmers that went switched to 15 inch corn and they bought 15 inch corn heads from these guys. But anyway, I'll see you guys at the farm. So I'm just about up to the farm. So I might as well explain what we got going on with that, why we picked up new parts of that corn head. So with a Gearinghoff, oh, there's Patty's feeding cattle. So with a Gearinghoff corn head, it typically runs a higher speed on the corn heads. So a higher speed on the head means faster faster those poles rollers spin and it really throws down the corn and when it does that on dry years it really tends to shell corn at the head and that's what we don't want because if we lose it at the head it just falls in the ground we can't capture it like it wouldn't be in the combine so what i did is i picked up this kit from calmer a link in the description for them but basically all it is is it's got a smaller gear for the drive line that goes into the corn head and it basically slows down everything downstream. So with the two smaller gears, we also had to speed the gathering chains back up to so put bigger sprockets on there. So I'll kind of show, explain that in a little bit. And there goes Renee, she's helping Pat out. So I picked up those parts from Calmer and I also got 24 gallons of, of marine grade RV antifreeze. So I'm gonna winterize the sprayer today because it's uh, really cold. All right, now I'm gonna come out, drop this pair of jeans off for Curtis because I'm a little bigger than I thought I was and Curtis is a little skinnier than I am. So I'm gonna give him New pair of jeans that I bought, they're too small. And then I'm gonna get to go ahead and work on getting the sprayer out and start winterizing that. And what I need to do is run a couple loads of water through it, rinse it out thoroughly, and then throw that RV, RV antifreeze through it. When water freezes, it expands, and it can break some of the plastic fittings that we have on that sprayer. So what we need to do is we need to get all the water out of that as possible and put some antifreeze through. So we still have liquid in the system that we can just run it through with water at next spring, but we need to put antifreeze in there, which won't expand when it, or freeze when it gets cold. All right, now I'm gonna start up the 190, start up the sprayer, back the 190 out, put it over there, back the sprayer out, and take it outside. Let's go. Renee. So I'm gonna take this thing up over to the water hydrant and fill this thing up with water. Man, this thing is dusty. I'm gonna take our hydrant here just because our water tank is not quite put away, but it almost is. Take a water tank and just start filling this thing with water. All right, we'll let this thing go for about 20 minutes and let it fill up. Sorry, cows. Sorry for scaring you. I'm also hoping that we're gonna get the dryer going today, pack it everything unplugged. So hopefully we'll still see, start seeing steam 
Ryzen. Man, don't you just love GoPros? This one's freezing up on me because it's starting to get cold and GoPro batteries do not like the cold. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what's inside these calmer kits that are Deering Hoff parts. So basically on our corn head, there's a ring gear like this, but it's six teeth bigger. So when we put the smaller one on, the entire head will spin slower. And that's what we want because we don't want our stock rolls that zing the corn down and separate the stock from the ear. We don't want that going so dang fast. So we're putting a slower ring gear on and that will slow that down, but it'll also slow down our gathering chains, which we do not want. So we also got 12 tooth gathering chain drive sprockets. This will basically speed up the gathering chains from a 10 tooth to a 12 tooth. So we're essentially, we're slowing down our corn head by 16%, but we're also speeding our gathering chains back up by 16%. So effectively we're slowing down our corn head. Make sense? Clear as mud, got it. Let's go ahead and give a camera to Renee since she is helping out in the farm today, it looks like, because both the boys actually went down to the Iowa State game in Stillwater, Oklahoma. So let's go ahead and give one while they're feeding cattle. Look at that smile, there you go. <laughs> Right now I got about 250 gallons of water in the in the main product tank. I had the pump running and had the agitation on, so I basically mixed it around. I want to basically just get all the walls and everything covered of that tank just to try to get all the chemicals off of there. And while I'm doing that, I'm also filling up the rinse tank. And then when I'm done, I'll go out and spray everything in the product tank, spray everything in the rinse tank, and then I'll go put the antifreeze in. And that's Renee. Hi. Alrighty, now that I thoroughly got wet on this nice and cold, damp day, I just gave the sprayer a quick, a quick rinse off, just try to get the dust and stuff off. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out, out to the field and go ahead and start spraying it out. Alright, I am boomed out. Now I'm going to go ahead and load this down, get in position and start spraying it, and I'm going to go out and walk it and make sure all of the nozzle tips are working. It's a little frustrating right now so basically what was happening is I tried to spray standing still and it would basically spray for five seconds stop for five seconds spray for five seconds stop for five, sec five seconds and I could just hear the pump hunting and hunting for it couldn't work so but when I drove forward kind of see there's some tire tracks right there I drove forward and it sprayed just fine so it sprays fine there's something with the self test feature or the, the fake speed feature so I'm gonna try a uh, restart basically shut everything down and restart it up okay so in case you don't know me I'm Nathan and Curtis's younger sister Renee but I'm older than the youngest one so I'm 16 as you can tell I have a big part on Hart on Hart and Family Farms no, I'm just kidding I don't really do much except run a grain cart when I can and help out with chores. So I figured out my issue. My issue is there's a radar on this sprayer underneath my cab, which basically is a more accurate detection of your speed when you're driving forward. Well, the wind will mess with that. So when there's a wind gust, you can see the mile an hour spike up. And when you spike up, it kicks off your, your test speed. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it. The system's working right now, it's flushing, so I'm gonna go walk the boom. So it's a little bit windy, and that radar, like I was talking about, is right there. So when wind picks up, when it picks up wind or trash moving, it'll shut that off. But it's working right now, so I'm gonna walk it and make sure everything's working. Which to me it looks like it is. I'm looking for basically a pattern, nothing stuck open. See how it's pulsing just a little bit, and there's a good pattern coming out of there? That's what I want. Ah, wind kicked it up. Retry it. I turned my fake speed down, so now you can see the pulse a little bit better. Center section's not spraying. What if I have a switch shut off? No, I don't have a switch shut off. Thinks it's already sprayed this already. All right, all my nozzles are working good. So this is, like I said, I don't own this sprayer, but I call it my sprayer because I'm the one that runs it 80% of the time. So I'm just, like I said, I'm winterizing it today. The reason why I'm winterizing it is because water, when it freezes, it expands. And when it expands, it'll crack some of the fittings on this on this sprayer. We don't want that, so 
I'm running water through it just to flush all remaining chemicals out. And I'm gonna put antifreeze in it, run that through everything so it's all full of antifreeze. And that way it won't freeze for the year and we can store it outside. So everything seems to be spraying, which is good. Chemical residue, not chemical. We already kind of flushed the boom out and there's no chemicals in there. Just trying to get all the chemical residue out. Hopefully you guys can see this well enough, but this is a pulsing system. So there's three vari there's two variables on a conventional sprayer that you can change to increase your speed or decrease your speed. Well, three variables. Your pressure, your volume, or your tip size. Tip size you never want to change because it takes time just to go through and switch all the tips. It takes like 15, 20 minutes. Your rate you never ever want to change because that is prescribed by the chemical manufacturer. So on a typical sprayer, you have a certain speed range based on your tip and your pressure size. So you typically vary your pressure to get you more speed. But in this type of sprayer, you have what's called a NCV or a nozzle control system. And what that does is it adds a fourth variable in so you can keep a constant pressure, which that's good because you, your pressure and your volume determines your droplet size. And I can go into all that later. But if you have a consistent pressure, then you can vary your, your uh, range and how open your poppets go. That's how you can get a much wider speed range and a much more exact pressure. So for example, there are, there's theoretically 10, 11 mile an hour. Here's four mile an hour. See how it changes that? There's a lot more pulsing. Basically it goes from all the way open to only open 25% of the time. That gives you a much wider speed range. Let's just say theoretically from eight to 10 mile an hour on a conventional sprayer to three to 13 mile an hour on this sprayer. We will never go back to a conventional system again. This is nice. So again, what this sprayer is showing me, this is my rate, which I always want to be 20, which is what I have it set. This is my target pressure, so 50, 50 PSI. So it's going to keep that PSI as quick, as same as possible. But this is the percentage that it's going to change. Right now it's at 72% opening. So it's pulsing a little bit, but not a ton. I could slow it down to basically 4 mile an hour, which will really slow down that pulsing. See how it slowed it down to basically 25? And you can really see it pulsing now. That's kind of how it works, but I'll explain more next year, guys. So you have to stay tuned. All right, now that I've thoroughly made this ground all muddy, time to fold up and go dump some antifreeze in. Winging them up, and I'll fold them in. Let's go fill some antifreeze up. I hear the dryer running, so that's good. Pat just called me from all the way up on top of the leg. Way up there, so. Oh, I gotta shut this off. I don't want water spilling everywhere. The pad is all the way up on there. We're trying to get the leg going. All right, I'm gonna go up on top of the dryer now. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those cell phone clips. <laughs> so now I'm gonna turn the wet leg on and then dump a little bit through and we're gonna make sure it works. Sorry about the wind up here, guys, but I am uh, on top of the dryer here and we have the downspout plugged. We think it's plugged right here. It's full here, but it's not full. Right there, it's pretty empty, so we think there's crap sitting right in here somewhere. So Pat's gonna go grab a rod and whatnot, and we're gonna try to get this out. And I didn't bring my GoPro up here because I'm all pretty high. So Pat's down in there, he's cleaning out the dryer. What was happening was all this stuff was gummed up. Going to the top of the leg, all the way down was just full of crap. So that cleaned out and thrown down. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna go down and start it up and try it out. They're on the dryer. It's cold, 40 degrees, late October, we're just getting the dryer fired up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those cell phone clips. <laughs> so now I'm gonna turn the wet leg on and then dump a little bit through and we're gonna make sure it works. Well, that's not spinning. So I ran a little bit through to see if it comes down. I hear it. Awesome, I think we got it unplugged. So now we're gonna fire this bad girl up. All right, we think everything's unplugged right now. So now we're just gonna make sure the grain pump's unplugged, but I think we're ready to go. Pat gave him the gets good. So I'm gonna start dumping antifreeze in while he buttons that up up top. And when he gets ready, I'm gonna go ahead and help him start the dryer up. And the GoPro badger's dead again. Don't you just love winter? Yep, uh, mm-hmm. That uh, blue stuff is not what we wanna see. That's snow. I don't want that stuff. At least not right now. Oh, gonna suck out some water. That is what 24 gallons of antifreeze looks like. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sprayer over, unfold it, run everything through the rinse system, make sure everything's dry as much as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spray it through the booms, make sure the booms all moist for the antifreeze. And I'm gonna park it and we're gonna leave her sit for the rest of the year. All right, so now I'm gonna take this back over, do the same thing, spray it out and flush all the water out of my boom. That way I get antifreeze through this entire sprayer, get all the water out, and we'll be golden. Here we are, winged out. I'll unfold the tips. All righty, so I think I sprayed out everything. I think we're good. I think we got a lot of this water out. You kind of see the little suds. That means there's antifreeze coming out of here, which that's what I want. So I think we're ready to roll. So I'm gonna put this thing up and probably call it good for the rest of the year. We are done for the year with the sprayer, guys. So now if I messed up and I didn't do my job right, We'll know, tomorrow, we'll know next year because we'll have water leak and when we turn the, we'll put water back in here and turn the pump on. But until then, I'm going to feel good about it. We're going to go start up the dryer now and hopefully get picking corn. We got LP running through the burner. So here's our temperature. We got our burner number one set to 200 degrees. Burner number two set to nothing. So we're just starting to heat up burner number one. And Pat just screened at me. He's up on top. <laughs> he threw some stuff at me, I should say. Let's go see what he's got going on. I was just all the way up there. Dryer's full. Now let's get her turn and burning. I smell the gas. Temperature's starting to climb, 56, 57. Alrighty, so I am going to go ahead and move this semi over to Jerry's because we're gonna shell a load of corn or two loads of corn tonight before we take off just to fill the wet bin. So I'm gonna check oil in this truck, check tires, let it warm up, and then head over. Ah, that was wet. Of course, that camera dies right as I started up. She was a cold start this morning, but she got running. I'm gonna go ahead and close all this up. I'm gonna walk over and get new batteries while this thing's warming up. Come back, check all the tires, and drive over. Go ahead and take this unit over. Always, especially when it got below freezing, run your truck in neutral and let it coast for a little bit. Make sure all the brakes are unlocked. No, I don't have my seatbelt on. Yes, I'm sorry, but I was only going a half mile. Dryer's burning hot, corn's good, so now we're gonna try and see if the unload system works. We got on the, on the unload system, we also got a moisture sensor as well, so we're gonna see if all that works. Here's the unload system, there's the moisture sensor. We'll unload out of the dryer into here in the drain pump, dry wet for whatever bin we want. The moisture sensor's right here, it actuates up and down. It goes down and since the moisture comes back up. If you start no mode, a lot of crap in there. Man, what a rough day. We've been fighting the dryer. First it was plugged. Now we can't get the moisture sensor to work. Now my GoPros are freezing because it's so cold out. Oh yeah, yeah, what a rough day. But So we're just gonna go ahead and start shelling. We're gonna shell a couple loads. I'm gonna put the sprayer away. Then we're gonna go combine for a little bit just to get something productive done. What a rough day. Well, other GoPro's still frozen, but I got this thing squeezed back in here. So now we're gonna go shell corn. Well, this GoPro is being a pile of poop right now. So I'm recording off the other one. So we're gonna start running. We're gonna shell at least a grain cart and a semi's worth. We're gonna go down to the bottoms where it's slow going and try to knock out some kind of down stuff. We'll have to ride with them and move trees and limbs out of the way. So let's start this thing up and start getting stuff started up. Great heater. Oh, I'll basically just warm up the air and let. Oh, that does, yep. These beeps are so much nicer than the Pro 700. I'm gonna go shut the truck off, probably. Let this thing warm up. All right, we'll pull this thing over, start dumping it in the wagon. Patch took off the water trailer. Well, I'm just gonna apologize for the audio from here on out, guys. It's still gonna be decent, but I'm, but I don't know what the heck's up with that GoPro. I think I killed it or something. Something's goofy with the software, but either way, I'm gonna go ahead and go dump this grain cart full on the wagon. We're gonna dump it in the shiver bin. Nice full load on there. When I say dump it in the shiver bin, I'm gonna dump it in that wagon there. Pat's gonna start up the tractor and the auger and dump this unit in. Basically, I got a control for my auger fold and unfold, my gate, and then my moving spout and your PTO can let control levers right here. That's all it is, she's pretty simple. All right, so what I ended up doing was I took 
this GoPro, swapping it on to this mic stand, and this GoPro is the pile of junk that I think is broke right now, so we'll see. Either way, Pat is dumping his full hopper right now. You can kind of see his, his rear end with his flashing strobe light. I am dumping into this 644 Brent wagon, which is dumping into this auger powered by the 5088 tractor, which dumps into this grain bin, which has a shiver system, which basically means it stirs grain around and dumps hot air into it. And then it can dump it into any of these bins here. I'm gonna dump this grain cart and then go meet up with Pat. So again, I got an 800 bushel Brent wagon and 882. And this is a 600 bushel wagon, 644 gravity wagon. Offloading into this Mayrath auger. I believe it's a Mayrath, powered by the 5088. One of the best things to ever put in a tractor, especially one in the northern states, heated seats. Changed my mind. Oh man, are they nice. We don't even have auto steer in this thing. I'll take heated seats over auto steer on this thing. Well, this time of year at least. You know it's good corn when you can't even make it halfway down the field before him getting a full grain tank and that's even doing the short rows because he won't have a full head this whole time because he started on that end and worked his way this way after he did his outside rounds. Also, just for the record, I win. What game you ask? Who can turn their lights on last? Called in for duty. We're rolling now. I mean, a whole two mile an hour, but still, it's fine. They made it to the end got probably a hopper and a half hopper and three quarter neat so now i think he's gonna do this outside round so i can walk with him i think that's what he said because we got trees and stuff down but it might be too dark we'll see all i know is i'm happy i'm happy we're running darn it well i probably have to give in there we go lights are on bumpy too We're moving. We're full, so basically, like we said, I just rode with Pat for a little while on that first round, just make sure there's no trees down. So now I'm gonna go take this full grain cart and go dump, switch place with my cousin Michael, who you guys will see in a little bit. I'm gonna go dump that truck and head home because they're just gonna fill this grain cart. 14 mile an hour is all this old, old girl's got. There is a little wet spot. Full 800 bushels on, it's all this girl's got. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start dumping. Hopefully we'll fill this truck and I'll take it back. Dumping. So what I did is I turned on the wet leg, turned on the con dump conveyor, and now I'm dumping into a pit. First load of the year. Too bad with the dryer's not running, but hey, it'll work. So this is actually my last load of the night. First load of the year, last load of the night. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my car ready while this is dumping. Well, today's just been an interesting day. I broke my mic. Mike Holder, I should say. It's right there. So I'm just gonna close this video out before I break something else. I'm gonna act like I'm interviewing myself. So guys, how did you enjoy that video? Oh, it was fantastic. Have you liked and subscribed yet? Of course. Okay, that's getting too confusing for me and I gotta watch this. Be sure to comment if you guys have any questions whatsoever. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearts and Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now.